And uh, as I was praying through yesterday, just thinking, okay, God, what is it? Uh, what's something helpful? What's something good that I can bring um, to the church? Uh, I just, I really, uh, one of the things that always comes to my heart in situations like this are, are Psalms and Proverbs. And, uh, and really, there was a proverb, there's a proverb that I absolutely love that I've never had a chance to speak on or preach on. And I thought that, you know what, that makes for a perfect kind of short encouragement and teaching from the Bible. Um, and so today, I'm going to, I'm going to read to you one of my favorite Proverbs and, uh, and we're going to, we're just going to work through it. We're going to look at a couple other Proverbs, several from that same chapter. Um, but really there's going to be one, uh, big idea today and it'll be very obvious as we read this, uh, passage. So let's read this Proverb and then let's pray together and we'll jump in. This is Proverbs 27, 6. Here's what it says. It says, faithful are the wounds of a friend. Profuse are the kisses of an enemy. Would you guys pray with me? Heavenly Father, I do ask this morning that you would come and meet with us. Lord, we pray as we dive into the word that you would speak to us powerfully. God, I pray that each and every one of us would take in the wisdom of this proverb, that we would hear that sometimes friends who say hard things that hurt are loving us in the best kind of way. I pray that you would prepare our hearts, that we would be humble to receive hard input from trusted friends, and that not only would we receive it, but God, we would apply it to our lives. And I pray you'd make us a people who seek out good, wise counsel in our lives, even when it isn't easy. Lord, speak to us, stir us up, help us today. In your name we pray, amen. And so, this, this proverb, you know, I'll, I'll sum it up. I can sum it up in one sentence, which I love. You have true friends who will speak truth to you. Uh, it, your true friends will speak truth to you that hurts sometimes. That's basically what this is trying to say. Your true friends will speak truth to you that hurts sometimes, right? It all, there's also another part to this. It says people who only tell you what you want to hear aren't your friends, I love the Proverbs. If you haven't ever sat and just read the Proverbs, it's a great, like, read the Proverbs in a month kind of thing, but uh, you can honestly read the Proverbs in one sitting. Uh, and it's something that I, I haven't done it in a little while, but uh, I remember one year I sat and I just read the Proverbs, and I mean, I'm laughing at Proverbs because some of them are hilarious, uh, and I'm also being stirred, and I'm also being surprised. I mean, the Proverbs are incredibly uh, surprising, uh, but they're full of wisdom, and they're helpful. And this one is one of the most helpful uh, things that I think we can we can learn as people. The Bible is huge. In particular, the Proverbs are huge on this idea that you and I, we need counsel. We need people outside of us who are trusted, loving Christians who can give us input. What this proverb points out is that when you receive input from people outside of yourself, sometimes when that input is really accurate, it hurts. But we can trust those wounds. It's, it's the way that this proverb uh, sort of words this. Uh, so this is so incredibly helpful for us to receive, but it's more important for us to put it in practice in our lives. Uh, for each and every one of you, it is so important to have people around you who love you, who you love, and who are willing to speak truth to you that you probably don't always want to hear, or at least you know it's going to be unpleasant when they say those things. We all, every single Christian, right, We all need outside perspective from mature Christian friends. The Bible's so clear that we need this. Uh, Proverbs 12, 15 says this. It says, the way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but a wise man listens to advice. Here's the thing. Our hearts can be blinded so easily. We can, we can be deceived so easily by our own desires and by our own emotions. Uh, it's just so easy for us to, to get caught up in something that we really want or caught up in a sin, all kinds of things to where we need we need counsel outside of ourselves. Uh, and so this is, this is really, uh, pushing us in that direction. There's a few steps, I think, to walking out, uh, the heart of Proverbs 27, 6. And the first one is this, it is, is finding the people who are going to be these faithful friends, who are going to speak hard things, who are going to offer faithful wounds, uh, to you in your life. Uh, so you, you need to have people. Step one is having people in your life who have an open invite to speak to you about anything. I mean, do you have people like that? Are there people in your life that you trust? Are there people in your life that you look to and you say, you know what, this is a person who I want them to be able to look into my heart, look into my life uh, and tell me, uh, speak honestly. And if they see something uh, that is concerning to them, that they could, they, could, they could say it, they could actually say it and I won't completely outright reject them. 
Um, right? We live in a day and an age where I think, actually, I think it's really timely to talk about this proverb. And one of the big reasons why is that in an individualistic society, uh, I think already it's hard to hear the outside perspective. Right? In individualistic societies, the idea is sort of it's my way it's, or the highway, like everything's about me, my hard work, what I do, my individual freedom, my rights, all that kind of stuff. Uh, and there are benefits to individualistic cultures, but there's also downsides. And one of the big ones is it can sometimes be hard to hear other people's thoughts. Right? I think we, our, our modern culture sort of embodies this incredibly well. Right? We, we are seeing, I'd probably say, an increase uh, in our culture's valuing of what the individual can say uh, about themselves, Right, to the point where you can declare or something about yourself that changes reality in the world, where you can say, you know, uh, I may have been born uh, a man, but actually I, the whole world needs to see me as a bear or something of that nature. You know, the, the, you're seeing our, our culture sort of move to this place where you can sort of declare reality outside of yourself and other people have to bend to that reality. Uh, and that's, that's, that's obviously a wrong way to go. That's an extreme <clears throat> version of sort of an individualistic worldview. And this proverb speaks against that. It basically says that, that we have to have other people outside of us telling us how things really are. Because if we're the only one who needs to declare how things really are, we're going to get it wrong. Uh, and I think in our culture, you see that uh, as uh, an extreme. Uh, that's, that's, that's happening in the most extreme kind of way uh, in our culture. All right. So uh, step one is having these people in your lives. Uh, so uh, the, the Bible actually is, before you have people, the Bible actually serves this function. So you have a relationship with God, and God serves the function as you read Scripture, right? You should read it about your own heart. I think one of the things I've noticed as I've read the Bible is it's very easy to read the Bible and be like, oh yeah, I know people like that. But the truth is, as we read the Bible, we need to let it speak to us. We need to let it shape our heart. We need to let it faithfully wound us. Uh, that as we read it, it will call things out in your life. It will reveal sin in your life. It will reveal brokenness in your life and in your heart that needs to be addressed. So the Bible, uh, Jesus is truth. It, it, it plays that role in your life uh, of speaking truth uh, to you. So you, you've got to be in the word. Uh, that's a huge, that's a huge part of this. Uh, but you also need to have mature Christian friends who play this role, right? You have to have this. You've got to have mature Christian friends, uh, who play this role. Now, this doesn't mean, this doesn't mean that anyone who's a Christian can criticize you. Doesn't mean that, right? And you'll hear a lot more, you'll hear a lot of criticism in your life. That's something that's going to happen. Uh, but I, I think what we find in our culture is you hear a lot of, you get a lot of people who think, okay, when I start to hear people criticize or bring their thoughts or their opinions, that I'm just going to reject all of those things. And so, you know, we have, you sort of have two extremes. You have the people who reject everything that comes in and you have the people who receive everything that comes in. Right? And your own heart will have one of those tendencies. You'll have a tendency to either want to receive everything that's said to you, uh, and, and you'll be down on yourself all the time, and, and you'll be constantly worried that people have harsh things to say to you, uh, or you'll be in the camp of you don't receive anything, right? Th- th- those are sort of the extremes, and we kind of fall, uh, in the middle. And so you have to, you have to kind of know where's your own heart, right? But this, this, this proverb doesn't mean that every Christian has a right to tell you, uh, or to criticize you. Um, but it does, I would actually, I would say, uh, play it, you know, play it on the cautious side that if you, if you start regularly hearing things, you know, people saying the same kind of thing in your life that you don't want to hear, there's a good chance that if it's coming from more than a handful of people, uh, that it's, there's, there's some truth to it. And then you take that to a faithful friend and you work it out, you talk it out. I've got a story I'm going to share about something that happened in my own life, uh, that I think applies to this Proverb. The other thing that this proverb doesn't mean is it doesn't mean that any criticism you get is genuine and real, right? So you could even, sometimes even faithful friends will say things to you uh, that turn out to not be true. Um, now that doesn't mean, I, I would say that's, that's more rare than common, uh, but it can happen. So you want to weigh these things. And the Bible actually gives us some passages. There's a, there's another proverb, uh, and I think it's, it's really helpful. Let's move over here. Uh, it says, this is Proverbs eleven fourteen. It says, where there is no guidance, a people falls, but in an abundance of counselors, there is safety, right? So in an abundance of counselors, the Bible basically says, hey, you know, if you hear something from somebody and you're not sure it's helpful, find an abundance of counselors. So this isn't just about even having one person in your life. It's about having uh, a family around you, a community around you, several friends around you uh, who can be, who can speak truth into your life. That actually helps you to weigh things out. But as I'm saying this, it could be true that you don't have a whole lot of mature Christian friends readily available, 
Right? You don't have a lot of people that maybe you have that depth of relationship with. And that's, that's, that can happen. Um, or maybe you, you have people around you, but you're not sure which ones, uh, are, are the people that you should, uh, get input from. And this is really where church comes in. This is why participation with church, one of the reasons why it's so incredibly helpful and so incredibly good. When you participate in the church, that means showing up. Uh, but that it just, it also means serving. Uh, you get involved in people's lives. You build connections to people. You build relationships with people. Um, and, it, and our community groups serve this function. So just showing up and serving and participating and meeting people is a way to, to, to bring, uh, mature Christian friends into your life. I can think of, uh, I mean, so many friends, uh, that I've met. I mean, most all of my my closest friends here at Living Hope Church, I met because of Living Hope Church. I didn't know them before I came to Living Hope Church. And uh, and several of those deep, meaningful friendships have formed in the, the more recent years. I've, I've made several very close friends uh, in recent memories. Um, and uh, and some of those people went to Living Hope for a long time, but it's only recently that we've really developed a, a deep, meaningful friendship. And uh, that's good news, right? That's good news because that means that in this room, is when it comes to friendship, guys, the harvest is plentiful. There are plenty of people in here uh, who you can fill, you know, even even during Corona apocalypse, when the church numbers are way down, like there are plenty of people in here who you could form deep, meaningful, significant friendship with. Um, and if that, if that's difficult, you know, if that you're having a hard time with that, we have community groups. Now those aren't currently meeting, but when those get together and start meeting again, uh, in the coming months, uh, the community group leaders are these kinds of people, trusted, mature Christians who are actually meant to help pastor, uh, the church. They're actually meant to help care for people in the church. And one of those things is, uh, being able to speak truth and, and have discipleship, right? That's actually what disciple, one of the roles of discipleship. It's not the main purpose of discipleship. Discipleship, uh, is supposed to help us grow in Christ. Uh, but it's also meant to help give us counsel. Um, so uh, community group leaders provide that. Friendship in the church can provide that. It's a big, big deal. So step one uh, of walking out Proverbs 27.6, uh, step one is to have people in your life who have an open invite uh, to speak truth to you, to give you counsel. All right? And sometimes that counsel will come when it's not an open invite. Um, and uh, you, know, you just got to be ready for that kind of stuff. Uh, the next step to walking out Proverbs 27, 6, uh, is to learn to have grace to hear hard things and not react poorly to it, All right? So uh, there's a couple of ways I think we can react poorly to uh, hard counsel or faithful wounds, as the proverb puts it. Uh, one of the unhelpful ways is to get angry or upset for longer than a short period of time. It turns out that good counsel can sometimes upset you. That's a normal thing. It's a normal thing to get, to become sad. It's a normal thing to get a little angry when you hear uh, a faithful wound, right? There's a reason that Proverbs 27 is in the Bible. It's telling us, hey, sometimes you're going to hear something from your friend that feels like a wound. Uh, and it's natural to react to that with being upset or being angry. Uh, but you shouldn't be upset too long if it's true, right? Um, and I have actually seen, I've watched people train wreck their lives because they res- refuse to accept the truth. They refused to hear the faithful wounds of their friends. I've seen this. I've seen people, uh, you know, uh, I've had friends who several close trusted friends were giving them input they didn't want to hear. Uh, and what they did was they turned that, they turned those faithful wounds into hurts and those hurts turned into bitterness. And again, another thing that's interesting. So not only do we live in an, in, an individualistic society, we live in a weird modern society to where you could have any opinion you want. You could have any lifestyle you want to your own detriment. And you can find a community of strangers on the internet to approve you. All right. You can find a community out there that will approve you. And I watched a friend who basically got tons of really good counsel from their closest friends. And what they did was they separated themselves from that group of friends who were saying this thing. They turned that into bitterness. And then they went out and they found people. And instead of presenting the truth to those people, they told a story about how mean all their Christian friends were. And then they started getting sympathy and, and they started feeling justified because all these people were saying, yeah, all those people are terrible people. They're evil people. They're not even Christians. And I've seen that happen more times than you would want to know about. Uh, it happens all the time. It's a super common thing. You know that story. That's not an unfamiliar story, right? That's how betrayal happens. That's how friendships sometimes fail. Um, but it, you'll note that it all hinges on this sort of idea in this proverb of receiving faithful wounds. Um, and so, you know, I would, I would advise you, if you have faithful friends, if you have, a, if you have a, an abundance of faithful friends who are saying something you don't want to hear and it hurts, don't reject them, right? 
but receive them. Because I'm telling you, these things can hurt, and I've seen people turn that hurt into bitterness, and they break those friendships off, all because they want to reject the truth. But here's the other thing about the truth. The truth always wins out in the end, right? And so if those faithful friends are speaking the truth to you, you can't avoid it. You can't run from it, right? I've also seen it where somebody hears those things from a friend, uh, and sometimes it's about how they've hurt those friends, and then they reject those friends. They go to a new group, tell that old group how bad those friends were, and then eventually, guess what happens in this group? Their eyes open and they're like, maybe this person really does have an issue. And then as soon as they point it out, what's that person do? They leave and they go to another group. And that happens all the time. That happens with churches. People do that with churches when they go to a church and that church says something they don't want to hear, but it's probably true, right? And so what do they do? They go to the church that changes the Bible to say what they want it to say, right? We can treat the Bible the way we treat a bad friend, or, you know, we can treat the, the Bible the way we treat these friends sometimes, right? The, 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 this proverb applies to the Bible. You know, just because the Bible says something that we don't like doesn't mean it isn't true. In fact, if the Bible is true, it will say many things that are faithful wounds to us, that hurt us, right? And if you read the Bible and all it says is what you want it to say, then you're, you're misunderstanding what it's saying to us, right? You're misunderstanding what it's saying. And there's so many people who what they want to do is they want to take this and they want to modify it to where it only says what we want it to say. Right? We've got to be careful. We can do that with the Bible. We can do it with friends. Right? So we've got, to, we've got to have grace to hear without reacting poorly to what our friends say. The truth will always prevail. So we can't let anger, pain, uh, emotional you know, overload or sadness block us from hearing truth and changing accordingly. Now, here's the thing. We all react differently, and it is appropriate to be sad. It's appropriate to be angry. It's appropriate to be upset or hurt sometimes when people say hard things to us. But uh, what I'm saying is you don't want that to be prolonged, and you don't want that to block you actually hearing uh, what's happening. And sometimes, here's the thing, we also have friends who have problems with delivery, right? And sometimes that needs to be addressed. And you can say, hey, I appreciate what you said, but the way you said it, that was unpleasant, right? And, and let's talk about that. And that's how you grow in friendship, right? You weather storms together, you talk openly, and you work things out, um, right? But don't let those anger, don't let, don't let being upset become an excuse to avoid the good input that was given, right? <clears throat> Another way uh, to act poorly would be to try to rationalize your situation, right? So maybe you're maybe maybe you're 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 not mostly upset emotionally, but you're just you really desire uh, something, and the counsel you're getting is telling you that that thing you really desire isn't isn't the best for you, uh, and so you rationalize your situation despite getting counsel from your friends. And I think this happens when we tend to really really desire something, right? And, uh, uh, and our friends counsel against it. So it's very easy to, uh, rationalize why we see more clearly than they do and rationalize, rationalize away our friends' good input. And I would say if you're in a situation in your life where <laughs> most of your trusted friends, the majority of your trusted friends are giving you counsel and you find yourself trying to rationalize that all away, uh, that it's probably counsel you need to listen to and stop doing the rationalization. Um, right. So uh, there's, again, this idea of an abundance of counselors from Proverbs 11 is so, so helpful to us. Um, I knew a guy one time, I've known several people like this, but uh, I can think of a story of a guy who uh, his desires for what he wanted made him just blind at what anyone else said. If you said anything otherwise than what this guy desired, he just wouldn't hear what you had to say. And it was like watching someone drive backwards on the highway and swear that they're in the right. It was like that where every person Every person was saying the same thing. And it's just, I mean, if you do that, it's, you're gonna, eventually you're gonna get in a wreck and you're gonna, you're gonna hurt yourself, you're gonna hurt other people. Uh, and that, that is so common. It's so easy for human hearts to be deceived. Human hearts, your heart, my heart, human hearts are very good at rationalizing whatever we want to be true. We're really good at it. Right? We need an abundance of counselors. We need an abundance of counselors. There's some people who accuse Christians of that. They say, oh, Christians just, they just believe what they want to believe. But that's actually the opposite of the case. Like, here's the thing. There's no other book like this. There's no other religious text like this. The Quran, you know how many people wrote that? One. Book of Mormon, you know how many people wrote that? One. This book, <laughs> written by over 27 different authors. I mean, you've got, you have got just a, a, a huge amount of counselors in this one book. There's no book like this in the world. None at all, right? The whole New Testament, right? It is literally the idea is it's a cloud of witnesses. It's an abundance of counselors getting together to tell about the greatest story that ever happened, right? And Jesus, the central figure, didn't write any of it. It's absolutely incredible to me. Right? I don't think there's anything, you know, I, my background is a microbiologist, I was a scientist coming out of college, uh, and I'm telling you, like, the reliability of scripture 
uh, is legendary. And there's nothing else in this world, scientific, historical, that compares to this. It is absolutely unmatched. And, 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 and like people will downplay that. People say, oh, Christians just believe what they want to believe. And the reality is that's somebody trying to rationalize the hard things this says. Because you know what this says first and foremost? It says human hearts are sinful. Right? When you read the Bible, one of the most incredible things to me is, is that the authors themselves are incredibly honest. Especially when you read the New Testament, you read about these disciples failing. They look like idiots. They look like fools. Uh, but the whole idea is that the Bible uh, is written in great humility. And that makes it more trustworthy, in my opinion. Because I've met a lot of people. People don't tend to put their humility first <laughs> most of the time. Uh, and, uh, and so, uh, but here's the thing, is that, is that our hearts can be good. Uh, at, at, you know, rationalizing, uh, good counsel away. We've got to be aware of that. All right. So that's step two is, uh, is, is, is <clears throat> having grace to hear hard things. Um, step three here, the last one I'm going to talk about today in receiving this truth from Proverbs 27, six. It's, it's growing to the point where you don't just receive hard counsel well, but you seek it out regularly. So you look for people to give input into your life. You look for people to speak hard things into your life. For me personally, I've had some pretty difficult circumstances that I've faced. Uh, there was a situation in my life where uh, I was, I, I just, I had, I had some really intense stuff going on and I didn't know what to do. I was like, I don't know if I'm in the right. I don't know if I'm in the wrong. I'm having a hard time seeing. So I went to several trusted friends and I talked and I basically laid everything out. I laid everything out that was in my heart. I laid everything out that was good, that was bad, my sin, my, you know, my, my, ba- like, I basically, I, tr- I probably tried to represent myself as poorly as I could because I was at the point where I was like, you know what? I'd rather know the truth. I don't want it. Like, who wants to, who wants to walk out? Of, I mean, I, that's just my heart. I don't want to walk out of a situation where I'm walking out pretending. Um, that's just sort of antithetical to my personality. So I was like, I'll just lay it all out. And if there's something really wrong with me, these people will see it. And then, you know, I can, I can deal with that. And, uh, and I'll, and I'll move on. I'll get through it. Um, I don't like unresolved conflict in my life. <laughs> That's, I, I, I'm not, I like to, I like it to be dealt with. It bothers me when it's not dealt with. So I lay all this stuff out. And what was crazy to me was as I laid my heart bare before these pastors, men much, much older than me, uh, and a varied group, an abundance of counselors, I'm telling this, 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 my, I'm laying my heart out before them. What was very interesting to me was that at the end of it all, I got a lot of input. And where I felt I had messed up the most or where I felt were the darkest moments, they were the most forgiving. They were like, oh, those are just honest mistakes. Those were just miscommunications. Those weren't, you, you're not, you're not, you weren't doing something really messed up. And then where they offered the counsel, I was like, ouch, because it came out of left field. It turned out that in telling the story and laying my heart bare, I didn't see so much. And they end up giving me all this counsel about how, how, you know, I, my, I was, I was too emotional and how I handled things. I let my anger get the best of me. I let my sadness get the best of me. I let, I didn't let, I didn't let the, you know, biblical truth, you know, give me confidence to handle a situation I should have handled a different way. And, and, and so I was making all these emotional reactions and I was, and, and, you know, it was just like this very funny thing. And, and so, and that was just one of the bits of, of, of information I got. I'm like, I'm not an emotional guy. Come on. Like, and I just remember, feeling almost hurt because I didn't see it coming. I think in my, I think I was overconfident because I thought I'm laying my whole heart bare. Look at how good I see my life. And they got me. They caught me off guard. And it turns out <laughs> that this is why we need counsel outside of ourselves because we can't fully see ourselves. We can't fully see into things. So, uh, it was, I'm so thankful. And actually I can tell you that season of my life and that input I received was some of the best, most treasured input I ever received. And man, did it hurt. Did it hurt when it came? The season was hard. The input was hard. It was gracefully delivered, uh, mostly. I mean, some of it wasn't gracefully delivered, but you know, the, the truth is, is that I'm so incredibly thankful. But here's, here's the big idea is that we have to grow into the point where we don't just, re- we're not just ready to receive hard input, but we're ready to ask for it. We're ready to go to people, lay our hearts bare and say, Hey, I've got a hard situation. I really just need you to speak truth in my life, right? Maybe you have a situation in your life you haven't talked to somebody else about. Maybe you have some secret desire, secret thing in your heart that you just need to go talk to somebody about and you need to lay it out, right? When, when we lay things out before God, we bring them out into the light uh, and the light shines on them. Right? It, a lot of times where there's, where there's a stronghold, you know, something's holding on to our heart or there's something we just can't seem to break free of. When we do that, we confess it, we lay it out before other people that, you know, there's real power in that and power that it, it breaks. The grip that we think we're stuck in can be broken by us confessing these things, talking these things out 
with other people, allowing them to speak counsel to us, counsel that might hurt, um, but could turn into the most helpful input you've received. Um, so uh, step three to all of this is not just being able to receive hard counsel, but to seek it out regularly, right? So here's, here's, here's our big idea. Here's where we're wrapping up. We all need close friends and counselors who can speak hard tr- truth to us, even when it hurts. Right, we need that. You need that in your life. We've got to be, we've got to grow into the grace to receive those things, uh, to not let our rationalization dominate, to not let our emotions dominate or linger longer than they should. You know, it's okay to get upset. It's okay to, to wrestle. I mean, we, wrestling with emotions is a very human thing. It's something we have to do. Feeling things is a very human thing. It's something we have to do. Uh, but we also, at the end of the day, we don't want those things to, do, to play too much of a role, to dominate too much. Uh, in our lives, which actually is another thing counsel can help. Sometimes we can feel like something is really overbearing and big and our friends help us to see, no, it's not that, not that big of a deal. Right? Um, and so we need to be able to receive these things. And then we also need to grow to the place where we, we seek out these things. Finally, another proverb. This is, this is, uh, just a few proverbs down from our first one. This is Proverbs 27 9. Our first one was 27 6. But Proverbs 27 9 says, oil and perfume make the heart glad and the sweetness of a friend comes from their earnest counsel. Just love that. Sweetness of a friend comes from their earnest counsel. All right? Friends, it's not all, not all counsel is, is a faithful wound. Not all counsel hurts. But there's just sweetness and people you can trust. Giving input. I've learned one of the great secrets uh, in life is finding abund- an abundance of counselors. Having the humility to say what you don't know. To have a humility to ask questions. To have a humility to look stupid. Here, it turns out nobody really cares if you look stupid. It's you. It's, you know, it's, it's in, inside we can feel like, oh gosh, what are they going to think of me? It turns out most people like it when you ask them questions, especially if they're an expert, or especially if they know something or they're wise on something. Um, and so I think, and that's a huge part of what it is to be a Christian, is humility, right? Swallowing our pride, <laughs> not being afraid to look stupid, uh, and seeking out counsel. Right? It's a huge part uh, of who we're meant to be. It's a huge part of what friendship is meant to be for. God's going to use these things to shape you into being more like himself. There's a fam- another famous proverb that says, uh, like iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens another. This idea that as we, as we deal with issues and conflict and we get hard counsel, uh, that we're actually shaped and sharpened. Um, you know, I've heard it said before that, uh, hard words produce soft hearts and soft words produce hard hearts, right? So hard words produce hearts that are humble and shapeable and malleable and soft words you know, just telling people what they want to hear actually produces hard hearts. It makes people think, you know, oh, I don't need to hear other people. I need to listen to other people, right? The Bible um, is is the kind of word that uh, it makes your heart malleable. Um, uh, and this is this. Here's the other thing. This isn't optional for us, uh, and it's also something that's easy to avoid in our lives. We have to be aware of this. This isn't. This is not optional. If you're a Christian, it's not optional to just live your life without getting counsel from other people. You can't be the Christian who says, "Oh, all I need is Jesus. All I need is God." That's just not true, right? From the very beginning, right? When God created Adam, he he said, "It's very good. The trees are very good. The earth is very good. The plants are very good. The stars are very good. The animals are very good. Man is very good." He said all that stuff, and then he said, "It's not good that man should be alone." And then he made another person. You were made to live in community. And here's the thing. No amount of bad community, no amount of human hurt ever changes that truth. Right? And the truth is, is that God, even the worst things that happen to you, even the most broken relationships that happen to you, God wants to shape your heart. He wants to mold you. Right? He wants to, to help make you more enduring. That's not to say you don't need counsel. That's not to say you don't need rest. That's not to say you don't need grace. That's not to say you can't be sad for a long time. All of those things are appropriate. Right? But you've got to have people in your life. This isn't an optional thing. And actually, if you're weathering storms alone, those, you know, that's, that, you're not meant to. Here's the thing. You're not meant to weather those storms alone. God will show you grace, more grace than we deserve, more grace than you, know, you can imagine. But we're not meant to weather storms alone. But this, that's the big idea. So I just think this is an easy thing for us to avoid, but it's not really optional. It's not really optional. So we've got to be honest with ourselves. Ask yourself this question. When was the last time you received a faithful wound from a friend? When was the last time you received a hard truth that hurt, but you received and changed because of it? Right? When was the last time you sought that out? Here's how I think we respond. Well, first, I think each, for each one of us, this is a discipleship check. So this is asking yourself, do you have people in your life who you are talking about uh, your faith with, that you're talking about what it means to walk with Jesus with? Do you have people in your life who you're talking out major decisions, you know, or all your major decisions just made by you? 
You know, so, so seeking it's out. Seek out discipleship, submitting yourself to trusted friends and leaders and asking them to speak into your life. That's a step that you can take. Finding people and saying, hey, would you, would you meet with me? Let's go let's grab coffee once a week. You know, let's hang out. Let's, you know, there's all kinds of ways you can connect with people. Uh, and, and, and setting out to do that and then asking people to speak into your life. I think a second thing you can do is you can pray. You can pray about your sin. Pray about, you know, your own foolishness, your own immaturities as you read the Bible. Right? That, that God would play that role. You can ask God, hey, reveal people in my life. Show people in my life. Connect me to people at Living Hope who can do this. I mean, I'll tell you this. You know, I'm 34 years old. I just turned 34. Uh, it's the first age that ever scared me. When I was in my, when I turned 33, I was like, I was like, hey, early 30s. And then 34, I was like, I keep going. This is going to just keep ticking up. And all you, everybody that's older than me is like, you're still young, you idiot. That's what you're all thinking. I know it. But, uh, <laughs> any, but what I'm trying to say is, uh, is that, you know, I know I'm young. 34 is young. And as the pastor of this church, I feel an incredible grace from God that he's allowed me to do that, that he's called me to do this. Uh, but in this church, there are, there are men who are older who I'm seeking counsel from. Right. Actually, Chris Silcott, who was supposed to preach today, uh, is a huge, is a, is a big mentor in my life. He's, he's somebody I have great trust for. Actually, our friendship really grew as I laid my life bare before him and I said, I just asked for his input. He's just somebody I see the spirit of God in. He's somebody I see, you know, he knows biblical truth. He's incredibly wise. And he, and he's one of many older people who I'm seeking counsel from. And so I'm not preaching to you something I'm not doing. I'm preaching to you something I deeply treasure. And in this church, there are men, there are women, uh, who, who you can find that counsel in. Um, and if you don't know, like, Chris, Chris is like a man's man. He's like a master carpenter. He's like an electrician. The dude could build a house, like, half awake. Uh, he's just, and yet he's, he's fatherly. He's wise. And we have so many men, uh, like that in this church. And if you're a, an older man, you know, looking around and, and just saying, hey, who can you get involved with? Who can you connect with on Sundays? Um, you know, if you haven't met people, meeting them, that can serve this purpose. Uh, and here's the, the, the last, the last step I want to encourage us towards is if you have several mature, wise friends giving you the same input in your life, you should most likely hear that input and apply it to your life. Let's pray. The band's going to come. Heavenly Father, I do ask that you would just give us the humility to receive, uh, this proverb, this truth, Lord. Faithful are the wounds of a friend, but an enemy multiplies kisses. Lord, I just pray that you would help us to receive uh, counsel from our friends. Lord, I pray for the, for this church. I pray that you would strengthen our community. I pray you'd strengthen our friendships. I pray for those who are in here uh, who maybe struggle with having uh, mature Christian friends. I pray you just open the door. I pray you'd highlight those people, God, that you're, you're laying before them. Because God, for each and every one of us, you've got people around us that you want us to connect to. So Lord, I pray that we would be people who have soft hearts as we hear uh, hard things. I pray that we'd be humble, we'd seek this counsel, uh, and that, Lord, we'd have grace to uh, receive it when it comes. I just pray you bless us, help us glorify your name, let us be more like you as you shape us uh, in all the various ways that you do. God, we just love you. We thank you for everything you do for us. In your name we pray. Amen. Yeah.
out on me Your love never fails, it never gives up Never runs out on me And on and on and on and on it goes For it overwhelms and satisfies my soul If more 
Specifically, 1 Corinthians 13. If you read it, it's a great read. You know, it talks about love. Uh, starts out, if I speak in the tongues of men or of angels, but I do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. So I think it's, it's the reality of it is, is that it's this inverse relationship we have with our own perspective, how we see ourselves, which can be ego, pride, and we just see a small image of ourselves. We truly can't see ourselves till God shows us. He shows us through brothers and sisters. He shows us through the word. And I think for the days to come, the months to come, God wants to reveal and show us even more of ourself. And further in this chapter, which I was sharing with Mike, I think it really coincides. It says, for now, we see only a reflection as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. And what a great thing to know that we are fully known. We only see parts and bits and pieces, good, bad, and different, just tiny little pieces. If you fully want to know who you are, and I think God says, open yourself up. Maybe if you have this time alone, go look in the mirror and just look at yourself for a period of time. Not necessarily putting on makeup or combing your hair or whatever. Look at yourself. I think God will reveal, open up of who you are. And I think to grow in Him, and I, I do believe in 2021, God is going to open up. God's going to move. He's going to have visions. 
He's going to have directions. I believe there's healing coming too. I think there's many people physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually need to be healed in this church. So I think, uh, you know, as I tell Mike, I just, that's been something I've been meditating, praying on for some time. So I just encourage everyone who's here, everyone who's uh, watching, is that moving forward, press into God, open up, reveal yourself. He wants to do that. He wants that deep seated relationship that's based in love, which he will open up and show you. So just encourage that to the body. Jesus, 
cross has spoken, I am forgiven. The King of Kings calls me His own. Beautiful Savior, I'm yours forever. Jesus Christ, my salvation in your name Jesus Christ my living hope hallelujah praise the one who set me free hallelujah death has lost its grip on me you have broken every chain there's salvation Christ, my living hope. Then came the morning that sealed the promise, your buried body begin to breathe out of the silence the roaring lion declared the grave has no claim on me then came the morning that sealed the promise your buried body silence the roaring lion declared the grave has no claim on me Jesus yours is the victory hallelujah praise the one who set me free hallelujah its grip on me you have broken every chain there's salvation in your name Jesus Christ my living hope hallelujah praise the one who set me free hallelujah death has lost its grip on me you have broken every chain there's salvation in your name jesus christ my living hope jesus christ my living hope jesus christ my living hope thank you jesus yeah, thank you, Jesus, for your love and your grace and your faithfulness. Be with us as we go out, God. Keep these words on our heart. Yeah, just be with us, Holy Spirit. Don't let our week end here with you. Don't let our week end here with each other, but help us to reach out, talk to each other, offer each other a hand. We just love you, Jesus. Amen. You guys are dismissed. See you next week.